Hey everybody, welcome to our video lecture on hand calculating a correlation. I decided to record a video for this um, to help walk you through the PowerPoint um, so that you can see all the steps uh, so that you'll be more successful on the homework and on the unit two exam. If you have any questions about any of the things that you see or the numbers that you get, you can always reach out to me through the FAQ board or through email. And if you think you'd learn better just testing yourself with the PowerPoint, you have the slides and you can just go by slide by slide if you'd like to do that. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so let's start with the formulas. The formula for correlation is R equals SP over the square root of SSX times S. S Y. R is the symbol we use for Pearson correlations. As you learned in the previous PowerPoint, there are two kinds of correlations that we will cover in this class. Pearson's correlations are the kinds of correlations you use with ratio and interval data, which in SPSS is called scale. Spearman's row is R with a subscript S. So R here is for a Pearson correlation. You will not have to hand calculate a Spearman's row in this class. Now, if we break that down, R, you know, is now the correlation. And what that equals is SP stands for the sum of products. SP divided by the square root of the sum of squares for X and the sums of squares for Y. We also have a formula for SP, the sum of products. And you can see it down there at the bottom. It equals sigma and capital sigma means summation, which means to add. It means that you take each score of x, you subtract from it the m of x, which is the mean of x, times the scores on y minus the mean of y. So we have x and y there, which is a specific score on each the x variable and the y variable, and you subtract from that the mean of each of those. You multiply those together for each person and add them all together. That's what summation means. Now, that all sounds fairly complicated, but don't worry, we're going to go slowly through it. Again, these PowerPoints and these videos are built, based, are built so that you can uh, go slide by slide and work along with us. So make sure you have your calculator and something to write with so that you can follow along. All right, so let's try an example. Let's say you recruit four people and you give them a measure of happiness, which will be variable X, and you give them a measure of positive interactions with others, which will be variable Y. You hypothesize that these two variables will be significantly related to each other. Okay, so now that we've handled the hypothesis, let's get back to calculating this. You'll see that on the slide are our scores for our four participants. Uh, participant number one scored a one on X, which is happiness, and three on positive interactions with others. You can see the scores for participant number two, participant number three, and participant number four. So from this, the first step would then be to calculate the average for X and the average for Y, because we need both of those to come up with the sum of products. I'm gonna pause and you come up with the average for X and the average for the scores on Y. You can also pause this video while you do that. Okay, so to come up with an average, we add together the scores on X, which are one, two, four, and five. We then divide by the number of scores there are, and there are four scores. So one plus two is three, three plus four is seven, seven plus five is 12, and then 12 divided by four is three. So the average, for x, the mean of x is 3. We do the same thing for y. We add 3 plus 6 plus 4 plus 7, 7 is 20, 20 divided by 4 scores is 5. So the mean of y is 5. Now, what I've done is I've expanded our chart a little because as we go through, this chart will continue to increase to help guide us along these calculations. So again, the formula we're using is this, the sum of products equals the summation of x minus the mean of x and y minus the mean of y. That means we now have a column here in our chart that is x minus the mean of x. We take each of the scores and we subtract the mean, the average that we just found to come up with a value. We need to fill out the rest of the column for x minus the mean of x. 
we also need to do y minus the mean of y. So for the first one, that would be 3 minus, and we would use 5 here because the mean of y is 5. And that would get us negative 2. Okay, so I want you to pause, uh, try to fill out the remaining parts of these two columns, and uh, again, pause the video, and then you can check your answer. Okay, so here we are on the next slide. You can see the answers, okay? Uh, again, so like one of the mistakes that I find that students make is that they'll um, mix up the, the signs, all right? So again, it's really important that X comes first and then the mean of X, and that way you actually have these numbers here with positives and negatives, okay? So check and make sure that you got the right answers. Next up, the next step is, uh, as you can see, we've added another column to our table, and that's because, again, the formula here is the summation of those two things we just found multiplied. So it's x minus the mean of x times y minus the mean of y. It's those two things multiplied, and then we're going to add them all together. So that would mean we would take the answer for participant number one, which is negative two, times their answer on uh, in the y column, which is negative two. And negative two times negative two is positive four. So again, signs do matter here, okay? Because again, you're going to be adding these together and then negative times a negative is positive and a negative times a positive is negative and two positives is a positive. So again, signs matter, all right? Uh, again, I'd like you to pause the video, try to fill out the remaining three columns here and then you can start the video back and check your answers. Okay, so here are our answers. We've got negative one, right, times positive one. That gets us negative one. Positive one times negative one, which also gives us negative one. And positive two times positive two, which gets us positive four, okay? So that gives us this concept, right? The x minus the mean of x times the y minus the mean of y for all of our four participants. You can see again why I've chosen four participants here. We would probably never do a study with only four participants in quantitative research, but I'm only giving you four participants because of the amount of calculations you're having to do. So the next step is summation. That's what this capital sigma means. It means to sum them together. And remember, again, as we're trying to find SP, which is the sum of the products. Products means to multiply. So here we're multiplying, and now we just need to add these together. So real quickly, add 4 plus negative 1 plus negative 1 plus 4. What do you get? You should get 6, because 4 plus a negative 1 is 3. Minus 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6, okay? So now we have our sum of products, which is 6. If we go back to our original formula, what we're working towards, this right here, we now have the numerator. So the next step is to work towards the denominator. So working towards the denominator, we need a sum of squares for x and a sum of squares for y. All we have to do is take that x minus the mean of x column and square it because again it is the squares so we're involving squares here so we just have to take this column and square it and this column and square it i've done the first one for you again right so negative two squared which is negative two times two is positive four same thing over here right so try to fill out our other six uh cells here so this would be negative one times negative one what would that be Again, pause the video before you move forward. Okay, let's check our answers here. So negative one squared is one. One squared is one. Uh, you can see that those are kind of the reverse over here. And then two squared is four. So we've got four, one, one, four, and we have them in both columns. Just like uh, some of our other calculation videos, I make these examples to be easy to help you work through the process. We don't want the examples to be super hard because again, that doesn't help you understand the process. Are these numbers often going to be the same? No, right? Um, uh, typically speaking, these would not be the same, right? In the real world, right? But they've worked out to be the same from the random numbers I selected for everybody's scores. It's not that it's wrong, it's not that it's typical, it's just for this example. So the next step is to add, because again, we're doing the sum of squares, right? So we need to add this column and we need to add this column. That way we can get a sum of squares for x by adding this column, 
uh, and a sum of squares for y for adding this one. Hopefully you got the answer. Again, because these numbers are the same numbers, your sums are going to be the same, but it's 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4, which is 10. So our sum of squares for x and our sum of squares for y for this example are both 10. So if that's our formula and we have our sum of products is 6, our sum of squares x is 10, and our sum of squares y is 10, you can plug everything in and come up with the answer. So again, pause the video. So our sum of products is 6, our sum of squares x is 10, our sum of squares y is 10. So on the denominator, we need to multiply these two things together, which would be 100, and then we take the square root, which would be 10, right? Um, now, of course, if your two numbers are the same, then you know that the square root would be that same number. But in the future, when those numbers are different, remember, you need to multiply these things together before you take the square root for order of operations. So we have 6 divided by 10, which gives us 0 0.60 as our final correlation value. So what does this mean? Well, what you hopefully learned in the other content, the previous content to this, is that your correlation here is positive, right? Because it's, it's 0 0.60, it's not negative 0 0.60. So it's positive. So that means as happiness goes up, interact, positive interactions goes up, or as positive interactions goes up, happiness goes up. These variables correlate in sync with each other. They're both going up. It would also mean that they both would go down at the same time. They have a positive in sync relationship. Also, 0.6 means that it's above the 0.5 Cohen D cutoff, which means it would be labeled as a strong correlation. So this is a strong positive correlation between happiness and interactions with others. Now, we don't know if it's statistically significant. To do that, we have to take these numbers and plug them into SPSS. That's what your group assignment is going to do for this module. So I hope our calculation video was helpful. Let me know if you get stuck anywhere, and um, I'll see you online.